Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for this afternoon's bill signing. Um, today, we'll be hearing from uh, Mayor Jenny Durkin, uh, who will kick us off with some remarks, followed by Katie Garrow, and uh, then we'll be hearing from uh, patient, Patience Malaba. So uh, with that, I will hand it over to Mayor Jenny Durkin. Who's here today, I really want to thank everyone who's here, but all the many, many people who aren't here for their advocacy and partnership that's gotten us to this place. Um, I want to thank Jessica Finn Coven, who you're going to hear from for all her work, Nathan Torgelson for his, Katie Garrow, uh, Patience Malaba, as we said, also Brittany Bush Boulay and Sierra Club have just been amazing advocates, not just for this, but on our, all of our environmental and climate challenges. Um, I want to thank Mike Fowler and Dwayne also for being here. Also, impossible to get them into this room, but I want to thank all of the youth activists who've been pushing the Green New Deal, not just in Seattle, but across the globe. Um, their voice has made a huge difference. And now that we're back in the Paris Climate Accords, that voice is going to be centered in a way it hasn't been before. So I want to thank them as well. Today, we're signing a bill that will update our energy code to one of the strongest on climate change in the nation in this area. Last week, the C Seattle City Council voted unanimously to adopt our proposed updates to the city's building code. I want to thank the City Council for their leadership um, and collaboration on these issues as well, because these updates will significantly reduce the use of fossil fuels in all of our new commercial and large multifamily buildings and increase building efficiency and on-site renewable energy use. The code covers all new commercial buildings and large multifamily buildings above three stories and goes into effect March 15th. I want to thank the broad coalition, and it was broad coalition of advocates, including the environmental, labor, health, and affordable housing communities for engaging with the city and speaking in support of this code updates at council hearings in January, but more importantly for their work through that year that was the worst of years 2020 to continue the work to make sure that we were moving positively. This is one of the first steps to prove that we can come back stronger, more equitable and better for our climate. Buildings are one of the largest and fastest growing sources of Seattle's climate pollution. Without collective action to reduce emissions through code changes, our city's greenhouse gas emissions will only continue to rise and the rise has been alarming. Buildings are one of the largest and fastest growing sources of Seattle's climate pollution. These energy code updates are a critical strategy to help Seattle transition away from fossil fuels and move towards a clean electric future and also other alternative energy sources. The city's targets are to reduce emissions in the building sector by 40% by 2030. That's an ambitious goal. This is an important step to get us there. But as we know, and, and we'll see in the coming year, we've got to do more on other fronts. We need to be net zero carbon by 2050. To do this, we must power more of our lives, our homes, our buildings, our transportation with clean, sustainable energy. Without code updates, we could see an up to a 10% increase in building sector emissions by 2050. This will help us stop going in that direction. Every new building should be all electric, and I'm eager to partner with the federal government as we think about green recovery and how we can put people to work retrofitting existing buildings to replace fossil fuels with renewable electricity and other alternative sources of energy. Seattle's taken a great leap forward in recognizing climate's impact on our city's rapid growth and implementing changes to build a different path for our future. It has to be holistic. Without taking bold steps, we will continue to see the impacts of climate change in our city, our environment, and our neighborhoods. We must end our reliance on fossil fuels. We must recognize the great toll that that has taken, particularly on our children, our seniors, and our BIPOC communities and not just here at home, but across the globe. The, flight for, the fight for climate change is a fight for justice because we have seen across the globe and across our country that the burdens of climate fall disproportionately on the poor 
in our communities of color and the poorer nations. Seattle's energy code is not only among the strongest in the nation, but it also prioritizes protecting the health of our most impacted populations. And it's critical to support our city's transition to a clean energy future. It seems more important than ever to find things that bind us together. Unfortunately, in 2020, we learned we are bound together in ways that are undeniable. Our fates are inextricably linked. But we were taught this lesson again through pain, the pain of a global health pandemic, the worldwide economic and health impacts of that, the deep pain of generational trauma caused by systemic racial inequity here and across the globe, and the deep pain caused by our climate crisis. I am proud to sit as one of the North American representatives on the governing body for the C40 mayors and was honored to serve as, as a small, with a small number of mayors from across the globe to plan for recovery from the pandemic. Well, I am enormously proud of this work and I am enormously proud of this work. We must never lose sight of how our actions in one of the greatest cities and one of the greatest countries is bound by our climate to villages in South America, Africa, and Asia that have been destroyed by droughts, floods, and new patterns of storms. We must see our actions as either the causes of or something that can slow the march of the untold number of climate refugees that will be forced from their homes, their regions, and their countries with no support, resources, and very little hope. In the end, I hope that our time is known not for being bound together by the crises, but bound together by our humanity, our determination and our actions to meet and resolve these crises. So I wanna thank and close by deep gratitude to Nathan Targelson at the Seattle Department of Construction and Inspections for his leadership in updating our codes to reflect these environmental values. Sometimes codes don't seem sexy to people or a way to cause change, but they are. And Nathan, I recognize all you and your team have done. I wanna thank Jessica Finn Coven, who has been a tireless leader to reduce emissions and climate change, caring for our environment and making strides in our commitment to environmental food justice. She's been doing so much through the pandemic to address these harms. Jessica will unfortunately be leaving the city to take a job with Energy Foundation, but we're so excited for her to have this great next step. We're so grateful for your service, Jessica, to our city, to our communities, and we are so looking forward to see how we can work with you more and how you continue to contribute. You've been amazing at what you've been doing. And I now will turn it over to a great partner, Katie Garrow, who's Deputy Executive Secretary with MLK Labor, Labor has been here every step of the way, and particularly Katie has been there helping our city to get on the right path. Katie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon. My name is Katie Garrow, and I'm the Deputy Director at MLK Labor. MLK Labor represents 150,000 working people in 150 affiliate unions across Seattle and King County. The labor community fought for these changes to the energy code in order to ensure that new construction in Seattle is built with the highest environmental standards, not just because we believe it is important to address climate change. We fought for these changes because this is a jobs program and one that invests in our future. I originally am from Grace Harbor County, Washington, a place that was once home to a thriving timber economy with forests and mills that my family labored in for decades. But today that same community boasts the second highest unemployment rate in our state with all of the social collapse that accompanies joblessness, higher rates of teen pregnancy, higher rates of kids who never graduate from high school, higher rates of suicide and addiction. It stands for me as a tragic example of the dire consequences of a failure of a community to address resource shortages proactively. Before forests lay barren and animals are extinct and moms and dads wait in the unemployment line. What happened in Hoquiam isn't gonna happen to Seattle with leaders like Mayor Durkin and patients at the Housing Development Consortium and environmental leaders like Jessica and the Sierra Club 
we do not have to have what happened in my hometown happen here or in other communities across the country. And that is a choice that we will make together. We can choose to aggressively combat the climate crisis and not kill jobs, grow jobs in the process, good family wage union jobs in the electrical trades and in insulating, work that is dignified, work that is skilled, and work that is fundamentally good for the future of our society. And in doing so, we will show the rest of the country how to execute a Green New Deal that boosts our economy, lifts up working families, and protects our environment. Thank you for the opportunity. We'll now turn to Patience Malava. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Duncan. Uh, it's always hard to speak after eloquent speakers like uh, Katie and uh, the mayor. But I want to begin by expressing my gratitude to you, Mayor, and the City Council for showing true leadership at a time when we are facing concurrent crises of climate, equity, and housing during an unprecedented pandemic. I also want to extend this gratitude to the partners like the Martin Luther King Labor Council uh, and the Sierra Club and other organizations that have been working in coalition to see this work across the finish line. We as the Housing Development Consortium are thrilled to see the strongest in the nation commercial building code change that gives us a chance as a community to achieve our 2030 uh, targets by solving our fastest growing source of carbon pollution. And that is, of course, the direct use of gas for heating in buildings. While we are now in an exacerbated affordable housing crisis, it is far much harder to address this challenge if we do not have healthy and sustainable communities where we can make those homes real. We care about the planet and what we can do in the built environment to ensure sustainability. And this code change is one milestone. We hold this action proud as one step in our journey to get us to achieving stewardship of our collective home for future generations. It is time to ensure that new buildings are part of the climate solution. And thank you for taking proactive action in committing Seattle to lead the way towards a clean future that prioritizes public health and a stable climate. We continue to look forward to working closely with you, with the city, to come up with best strategies that ensure efforts that address the climate crisis and at the same time increase the production of affordable housing that is needed to meet the current need. We don't accept that we have to pit the crises against each other. With that, I thank you for all your leadership and all the work that you have been doing. We will now turn it back over to Mayor Durkin, who will sign the bill. Uh, if you have not already, I encourage you to change your viewing to the grid layout so you can witness the mayor sign this alongside all of our wonderful community partners here today. Once the mayor has done is done signing, I will open everyone's mics and we will celebrate together as best we can via WebEx. The bill is signed. Thank you, everybody. I kind of want to put you on the spot, but um, since this is one of the last press conferences you'll be in, and you have done so much work in this space, if you want to have some closing words before we take Q&A, I want to give you that position. Oh, Mayor, thank you so much for that opportunity. Uh, and I would take a moment just to thank you for your leadership as evidenced by signing this code today, but also to say when I look at the the group of people that I'm seeing right now who came out and spoke in support of this energy bill, uh, our partners from the Martin Luther King County Labor Council recognizing that climate action needs to be and can be a jobs growth and economic growth strategy, looking at patients and knowing that housing justice and climate justice go hand in hand and that we need uh, fossil fuel free affordable housing. 
looking at Brittany um, and the Sierra Club and knowing the partners we have in the uh, incredible environmental movement, these are the partnerships uh, that will drive Seattle's clean energy economy forward. And, and then I'll just close looking at Dwayne and in the city employees who are so committed uh, to working in partnership with everyone here. This is the future of Seattle and the future of climate action. And I am so grateful to have gotten to work alongside all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your new position. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us here today. I'm going to now invite any press who are joining us on the call to please use the hand raise feature if you would like to ask a question. Um, we'll give it a, a few minutes. There were no press that RSVP'd in advance. So if there are no questions, we will turn it right back over to Mayor Durkin. Seeing no hands, I will turn it back over to Mayor Durkin. It's so fantastic to be at a press conference where there's no controversy and everyone understands the importance of moving forward on something. So that's a great sign. I just want to again thank everyone on this call and I know the teams and armies of people behind you. Um, and particularly want to thank you, Jessica, for helping to continue build this, this coalition and you, Nathan. A shout out to all the city employees and directors. Last year was just um, an inordinately difficult uh, year for everybody and so difficult as individuals to be juggling all they had to do in their personal lives, respond to the crisis of the pandemic as a government and still do the positive things like this to be thinking, what does it look like when we come out and how do we continue to move these balls forward? So Jessica, to you and Nathan and to all the others like SDOT, which has been working to accelerate as many of the bike lanes as possible, even in the midst of the pandemics in the West Seattle Bridge, to our utilities that have been really looking at ways that we can use the electric grid to decarbonize, um, but also make it affordable and not be an equity division instead of one something that brings people together. So I just really wanna thank everyone across city government for the work they've been doing and for their commitment to this better future, because we don't have a choice on climate crisis. We've got to take steps, and this step today is a really positive step. So thank you to everyone for your work. Um, you can end today knowing that a good thing happened. See, it's already better than 2020. Um, thanks for all your work. Everybody take care. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. That now concludes today's bill signing.